Fusion 360 has introduced a wonderful new command. You'll find it on the model section, model workspace, under the create command. You'll also find a different version of it under insert. They do basically the same thing but in different ways. What I'd like to do is demonstrate the use, proper use of these commands as showing you some examples of their use. First of all, what is derived? Derive will take a sketch, body, component, sheet metal, flats, or, and parameters from one model to another or one file to another, even across projects. And once it's derived, that derived part is linked to the original. So it, when the original changes, it will update in the one you derived into. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a derive of a sketch into a model. So I go to check uh, create derive and you'll see you have two options create a new design or go to an existing one. I'm going to go to the existing one which eliminates a lot of features. What you want to do you can select the sketch but the problem is when you get the sketch there you can't move it so we're not going to do that. I'm going to do it again and I'm going to derive the component into that will give me the option of moving it around. Notice that when you do this the sketch becomes a part of it. I could also do parameters but at this time I'm going to skip that and come back to it later. I'll say OK. It's now going to prompt me my, for my target. What model do I want to target with this sketch? I'm in the same project, but you could go to another one if you like, which are listed at the top of the list. I'm going to this table, and you see it comes in. Now let's take a look at your timeline. There's the derived component, and by the way, the only way to get rid of it is to right-click on this and delete it from here. Notice you can also break the link. We'll do that later, but be careful doing that too early. The arrow in the browser indicates it's a derived component. So I'm going to move this component into the center of the plate. So I'm going to pick on point to point, pick on that point, and then go to the center of the plate. And I guess while I'm here, I think I'm going to rotate it. So this is something you can do with the derived component. I'm now going to use that component to cut this plate. Cut. And I'm going to drag it through this side and I'm going to say all and say OK. Now it is linked. So if I go back and I right click on this derived component and say edit derived feature, it opens up the file. I can now go over here and do something to the sketch. So what I'm going to do is edit the sketch. I'm just cancel this for a second. I'm going to edit the sketch and change the dimension. Let's change one that's pretty obvious. Let's make um, this one right here a little bit bigger. Let's make it an inch bigger. Make it four. Whoop, can't do it because of a solved problem, so let's just do this. Let's make the length of it a little longer. Let's make it three and a half. It can do that. Now, to make this available for the derived component, I need to save it. Now, switching back to the component I derived it into, you'll see an update symbol. Hit update, and you'll see the size changed. So, I have demonstrated uses of a sketch derived and how it updates. Let's do another use of the derive command. I'm going to use it on a component. Now let's set up a little scenario that this table is going to be used for multiple projects. The outside shape, the fillets, and the counterboard side holes are common through all the designs, but the interior bolting, holes, whatever, are different. So you can use derive here to your advantage. 
So let's go ahead and derive this into a new assembly, into a new design. Notice you have two options down here. You can pick as many model objects as you want, or you can pick only one component. It's up to you. I'm going to only pick one component. Please note that it brings along everything, bodies and sketches. Now, if I didn't do that, let's say I just cancel that. If I go over and derive and only pick on the body, I will not get the sketches, just the body. So it depends on how you pick for the derive what you get. I would like just to have the body, so that's all I need. I'll go ahead and say OK. And you notice I have a new component. I'm going to call, save this right away and call it second table. Now remember, it's linked to the first one. So if I go down to the by, you'll see the linking or the derived component. So anything changes made to the original will show here. Let's go ahead and treat this like the second table. And let's go ahead and use the other command, insert a derived sketch into it for use. So insert, I'm going to go down to cutting sketch. I want to pick up the component because I want the sketch and be able to move it. Again, no parameters at this time. I'll get to those in a few seconds. So there it is. I will move that component to the center or that sketch by point to the center. And I'll go ahead and cut with it. Cut through. So we've got a derived sketch into a derived component. They both will update if either one changes. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to the original table. Let's say that the customer called up and said that the fillets had to be changed in size. So let's go ahead and edit the feature on this is the base component. Let's change it from one inch to a half inch. As you can see they changed. Save this and when I go to my second table which was derived you'll see the update. Watch closely the fillets. As you can see the update. If I go into the sketch and change the sketch, let's just edit the sketch, and let's change the width of it from 1 to 2. Stop sketch and save. You remember you must save to have the update work. The update symbol comes up and you'll see that the cutout expands. Let's continue with this piece. I'm going to go back to the original one and change the fillet back to one inch. It looks kind of silly at a half. So I'll go back to one and say OK. I'm also going to make a sketch visible. And it's right there. And it has two points. I'm going to add some tapped holes. Now this is to the original again. Remember that. So I'm going to pick on these two holes and I'm going to make them tapped all the way through and they're going to be let's see all the way through and the size of them will be hmm, let's make them one inch and say OK so now I save this is the master so if I go to the second table you'll see the update symbol and they appear the sketch did not change, so that will not update. So you can go on and on with this. And so you can make another table for working off the original, and they'll all update. It's a marvelous feature. Now let's talk about breaking the link. When you come down and you break a link, you're going to see this dialog box. You can turn it off if you want to. But remember, it breaks all the links to the original. So you need to think about doing this at the end of the design when you want to lock down the design so it can't be changed. 
other than that, you can leave it in place. I'm sorry they don't give you a, the abilities to suppress the link. It's a, it's a one-time feature. You turn it off, you can't get it back. So please remember that. We're going to continue with this tabletop and make a third table and show you how to share parameters using the derive. So I go into, first of all, and show you my parameters. I have made a couple of them favorites. This is the best way to do it. The length and the width of this table. So now I'll go to derive and I'm going to pick on the component again. But this time I'll go down to the bottom and I'm going to pick on parameters. By the way, this check is persistent. If you did it last time, it's going to be there, so be sure you check it. I'm going to a new component. And so now I'm going to, if I can get this thing so I can see it. Come on now. Here we go. Into a new component. I'm going to go ahead and save it right off the bat. I'm going to call it third table. Now let's look at the parameter table. As you can see, the parameters came across in the drive component and each one of them added a reference to it. Had two sketches, but I'm not going to use the first one. Notice the reference after the name. Very nice feature. I'm going to turn both these to favorites to make them easier to use. Now I'm going to do a sketch on the top of this and use those parameters. So I create a sketch and I'm just going to draw a quick box in the center. And I'm going to mention it after the fact. I find that sometimes easier. So I'm going to pick on this, drag it out, and I'm going to type in width, which picks up that one. And I'm going to say divided by two and enter. That's a little too big. So I'm going to change that divided by three. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the length. Pick up the length variable and divide by three again. As you can see, we now have a linked sketch to a derived parameter which is really cool. I'll go ahead and create this cutout. I tell you what, let's not make it a cutout. Let's make it a, a extrusion or join. I could make it a, a new body if I wanted to. Now let's go back to the original table and let's change the length of the table. Go into the original sketch and let's change the length of the table to 14. That, of course, updated the parameter. We now, and the parameter is now 14. Let's save it and go to our third table. Now, when you do an update here, two things are going to happen. The length of the table is going to get longer, plus that block in the center is going to go with it. Update, and everything updates. Now, if I look at my parameters, you'll see that that parameter has changed. See, we have 14 is there. And this is now 3 divided 14. Video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to do one more with you, and that is deriving an assembly. So I'm going to derive into this table an assembly. So I hit the insert derive. I'm going to pick it from another project from my vibration mount project and I'm going to find an assembly. Let's see. Is this one right here? And it opens it up. Now you have the ability to select the whole assembly or you can pick individual components. It's up to you. But I would recommend you pick them from the browser rather than from the model because you'll get the sketches and everything. If you just want the bodies, that's fine. But if you don't, you might want to be sure you pick it from the list. I'm going to pick the whole thing. I'm not going to bring in the parameters, so I take that check off. Remember, it's persistent, and say OK. It comes in. It's just sitting down the bottom here. There it is. 
Let me turn off in the derive. All the joints are there, still there, and they're active. Let's just make them invisible. Now, notice I can move it around. You can also use your assembly joints on it. So I'll add a joint between this hole and that hole. And you see it moves over. By the way, the part the assembly brought in, the joints are still active. So as you can see, it can be used to join assemblies together. Now, if, you, if this assembly changes in any way, it will update automatically because it's linked. You can break it if you want to, but let's go back to the actual assembly. In the assembly, let's make the casting uh, active. And let's expand that and let's turn on the sketches to see the holes. Go to the holes. Let's eliminate one hole. So we edit feature and I'm going to take and hold my control key and get rid of that hole and say OK. As you can see now, I turn my sketches off. I only have two holes. I'll save that. Well, let me go back to the master, make that active and save the component or save the assembly. Going back into the table, you'll see the update. Hit update and when a hole will disappear. I hit, hit it twice in this case. There you go. So I hope you see the power of derived components in both insert derive and create derive. Thank you very much for watching.